Welcome back to the Seaboard Central, everyone. Today we're gonna to do another weathering video, and this time we're gonna be using an airbrush. So I have three fresh out of the box, ready to roll Atherin ethanol tank cars. And I'm gonna show three different uh, weathering techniques using an airbrush, so stay tuned. All right, before we get started, I'll show you my setup. My uh, airbrush of choice is this uh, Iwata Neo that I got. It's a dual action. I've got a couple of these. I like this one because it's got the little uh, mixing cap on the on the top. I've got another one that it's on the bottom. You can put a bottle in. And also I use a compressor down there I picked up from Home Depot I believe a lot of people use these for nail guns and things like that it works good for uh, my pneumatic nail gun the uh, airbrush booth is from Micromark and as you can see I can vent it to the outside as far as what we're going to be using in the airbrush today I can still find this Tester's dull coat that I spray through the airbrush. Um, I can pick that up at my local Hobby Town USA. Also, they make gloss coat. We'll be using that. Um, I like to use the Vallejo Model Air, and I thin it with their their own thinner. And this uh, is what I use for thinning the paints down to weather the cars. So one of the first things I do is I run this uh, Iwata airbrush cleaner through the airbrush, make sure it's working okay. It is. So what we're gonna do is uh, to fade this car, I'm gonna add some Iwata, oh no, excuse me, Vallejo thinner. And then I'm gonna just take some of this white and put a few drops in. Excuse me. And then I'll mix it up. Just find something small to mix it up with. If it's too thick, I can always add a little more thinner to it. test it. All right, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to test it on that bottom of that block. Okay, these cars are weathered from the top. That's where the sun beats down on them. So I'm probably about, I don't know, a foot and a half away from the car. top of it, side, this is mostly thinner, it's got a little bit of the white in it. All right, I'm going to let that dry. All right, I've given it a few minutes to dry. I'm gonna add another layer to try to lighten it up some more.
to clean this airbrush, I'm just gonna put a little bit of this eyewater cleaner in there. Since this was mostly thinner, it, it's not gonna take much to clean it out. All right, the next thing I've done is added some of this Vallejo Dark Earth with some of the thinners to the airbrush, and I want to do the bottom side of the car. Right under where the trucks are. Maybe the end. We're going to spray a little bit of this right here on the show you how to clean up the airbrush. I'm going to just take some um, isopropyl alcohol, put it on a paper towel, clean this cup. Wipe the end of the airbrush down. Unscrew this part. This uh, little part right here, take it off. Pull this out. And run it through this alcohol. Clean the needle. Be very careful, always pull it back to you like that. Stick it back in. Tighten this back down, and we're ready to go for the next step. All right, for the next one, we're just gonna spray this one with some dull coat. We'll add our weathering powders and things later to the car. You just wanna tone down that plastic. So we'll put some straight up dull coat inside the airbrush. And I my belief is, is this uh, dull coat does better coming out of an airbrush than it does coming out of the rattle can. But that's just my opinion. Some people have great results with the can. I like the airbrush. pass over the entire car with the dull coat. Make sure we get the underside of it. Top. like that. All right, for the final car, we're going to make it have a shinier new paint job. So we're going to put on a coat of gloss coat.
good thing about tank cars, the uh, older the paint job is on the car, the more faded it will be from the sun. So uh, it's not, not to have some variation and have some that looks still shiny and newer. And that's what this gloss coat will do. Give it a reflective quality. All right, we're back at the workbench and I've got the first car that, that I faded and I pretty much just used the airbrush just as the base coat. And now we're gonna put some weathering powders on it. And what I've done is I've added a little top to the, to the car. And now I'm gonna just pull it down this, pull it down the sides of the car. And just kind of work it in. Just kind of massage it into the top of the car where that sun has really bleached this uh, car and faded this car out. do is I'm going to pull it down the sides just take a little it'll pick up the seams on those on the side of the car. All right, for the ends of the cars, I'm gonna apply some of this medium earth to help show that kick up spray that happens at the, right where the wheels are. I blend it in. All right, now I'm just going to seal everything in with dull coat. this gloss black car I'm going to add some of this dark gray weathering powder to the top of the car especially uh, around where they load it out at and then blend it in with a large brush Maybe even some like some coming down the side. Behind that ladder. Also put some medium rust or medium earth. I 
at the ends of the car. Now we'll seal it up. So here's the final product. For information on how I weather my trucks, couplers, and wheels, check out my previous weathering video that I uploaded just before this one. You can see here the first car has been faded down. Got some rust streaks coming down the side of it. Second car was just toned down with the dull coat. Take away the shininess of the plastic. And the third car has got the gloss coat on it to look like a, a newer paint job. So, I hope you've enjoyed this episode of the Seaboard Central. Until next time, happy model railroading, everyone.